What's up, Westchester? I'm here at Broken Bow Brewery, where I'm going to learn about beer and taste some as well. Come on. Hi, we're here with Kristen at Broken Bow Brewery. Thank you so much for having us. I have to say, I love the vibe just stepping in here. It feels like a brewery. It feels really fun and relaxed. And Thank you. It definitely seems like you guys know what you're doing with all the equipment and all the taps. And there's so many uh, words to choose from. Thank you very much. We, we hope we by uh, year three that we've uh, kind of got things nailed down. <laughs> Happy anniversary. Thank you so much. So this seems like it's a very family-oriented business. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, uh, we are definitely, it is uh, my mom, dad, my brother, sister, and I. So 100% family-owned and operated. Uh, it's really great, too, because I think what makes it work so well is that we all have our own areas. So my brother, Mike, he is the head brewer. My sister, Casey, is the assistant brewer and also in charge of um, quality control and microbiology. I do all the uh, marketing and design type of work. My dad, Lyle, is in charge of sales. And then my mom, she's, the, uh, she's really in charge. <laughs> concept of home brewing. He is the one that brought all the equipment over to my parents' house. Um, but it was the five of us who really decided together um, after a few years to take it to the next level. That's so cool. I, I, it seems like everyone's dream to yeah. open a business with their family and have it sit around. Um, and it's just, if you can feel that it's a family operation, uh, I, I see you guys interacting. And, uh, so when you guys had the first idea to open the doors, how long did that take? Uh, we decided, um, I think a little after 2011. 2012, we took the step, took about a year of construction, and then in 2013 is when we opened the doors. That's so great. And it was pretty seamless to drive the duties that everyone was kind of really just going to their own places. Yeah, basically, um, we all have our, our minds work the same way, but we all have very different uh, traits and characteristics that make us, you know, oh, that sounded weird. <laughs> That's what that is. That's what um, no, it worked out really well because uh, we do, we are all very stubborn and thick headed. We are very hard workers, but at the same time, Mike, Casey, very science oriented, um, very methodical, and they have that. Mike, especially if you put a pen and paper in his hand, not an artist, <laughs> but when it comes to just smells, aromas, seeing different things, um, you can just see his brain working, which is really cool. Casey, with the science, I mean, there's, it's, it's uh, an art within itself. Um, I am extremely hands-on. I have to see and move things around. Um, and my dad as well, just he's a numbers guy. My mom is the glue. So it really did work out well. Nobody pushed each other into a different spot. So although the hours are extremely long, uh, this is not an easy industry to be in by any means, um, it, that part has been probably the most seamless. Has the whole thing been just decide that you want to make beer and then you make it and sell it and you call it a day? No, absolutely not. I would say we have hit probably every bump in the road and maybe made a few of our own as well. Um, when we were home brewing, we were home brewing. We enjoyed beer, we wanted to make beer, we wanted to drink the beer and, and sit around with our friends. Taking it to the next step um, between the legal, the trademarks, the design, uh, how do you make a can? What font do you need? Uh, how do you get a license? Um, even the equipment, we started off with our pilot system and then we had to learn where to buy this equipment, how to fund it. Um, so it's been very, very interesting, but it's been a, uh, a hard ride, but a very fun and rewarding one. What's the best part? The best part, I think, is the end result, which happens often between the events or um, adding something new. We just added our beer garden. Matt has been a year in waiting, uh, seeing that from beginning to end. 
uh, the beer. When you have a new concept or idea, uh, when you do it for the first time, when you watch somebody sip it and just holy smokes, this is awesome. Um, you know, seeing people wear your shirt. Now I can go to the grocery store and I'll see somebody with a broken bow shirt on. I know. That's so cool. I know. So it's it's definitely the rewards are endless, um, and there's always something new. Being a small business, there's always going to be something new um, that we're going to have to learn. Does it make you feel closer to the community? Yes, for sure. I have met so many awesome people here. Um, some by coincidence, some from behind the bar, having a good day, a bad day. Um, we have a lot of families here, a lot of regulars. Um, we were talking earlier, there's been baptisms here, we have a wedding here. So many memories, yeah, and, and it's really cool. It may be stressful getting to that point, but I will never forget, I took a picture for myself of um, when they got married because somebody chose to have their most amazing special day here. Um, so there, there's, it, it's, you sleep well, you know, all the time. That's so cool. I think, you know, you feel the love, so. Yeah. It's kind of amazing. Yeah. <laughs> you have a lot of regulars? Yes, we have a ton of regulars. Um, some now that we've known for three years that help us out. We we have a us family, but even more, we have a broken bow family. Um, we we've expanded. We have our own kids. We have Mike had two daughters since we've opened. Um, my two sons were here since the beginning. Um, but we really do have between employees and regulars. We have such a huge network. Um, when we do, we really call it, we'll have Coke and Go, like family barbecues and everything where a lot of the regulars will come. Tell me you put your kids together. Yes, yes. Mommy's not going to do all the heavy lifting all the time. <laughs> Same as at home. Um, it, it goes within that balance. Uh, we are here seven days a week. Um, some days are very, very long days. Um, and with my kids, not only do I want to teach them the, the importance of working hard, um, but we also want them to feel a part of this. Um, this is for all of us, our baby, and we want them to understand and respect that. Um, but then with the family life, the balance, uh, it's hard to find days just to go to the movie or go to the park or random, because you do need to be here and we do need to support each other. Um, but my kids, for instance, they'll come in, they take turns with my parents on Saturdays, and they'll go to the diner and get hot cocoa. And then they come here and they each have their little goggles and they have little gloves. Um, and they'll polish the right. tanks. Um, they will help to clean some of, I mean, obviously, you know, nothing dangerous, but they'll help clean, they'll polish, they'll fill up the peanut jars. They will sweep. Um, they are, People, you know, know them here. So, and then when Lucy and Chloe are old enough, they'll be joining in the fun. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure they're gonna love it. In, yeah. In many years to come. Yeah. And how did you come up with the name, Broken Bow? Broken Bow, my mom was born in Broken Bow, Nebraska. A lot of people say Broken Bow in this area because of the water, which was, we didn't even think about that. <laughs> um, but it is Broken Bow, um, very small smack dab right in the middle of Nebraska. and. The correlation really there, aside from so many awesome memories, is that all the family that is still there, they're some, some way, shape, or form um, part of the farming industry. And it's the same concept. You're starting with something from scratch, and then you end up with a product that after endless hours, you've made, and you're selling it. Well, I can always take it here. Sure, would you like me to pour you a pint? I would love some. All right. So I hear you like the lager. All right, so here's your lager. Thank you so Good. much. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, that's really good. Thank you. I'm not surprised, but it's really, <laughs> it's really good. Thank you. <laughs> that it. is one of our four, one of the four of our mainstays. So we have the broken yes. auger lager, uh, our red like ale. And we have a broken auger. Hence the lager. <laughs> I like it. And then uh, <laughs> we have our Broken Heart Stout and Marbledale American Pale Ale. Nice. Yep, and those are offered year-round, and we sell them in cans as well. 
Very cool. Yeah. And do you have any events coming up that yes, you're excited about? Yes, we do. Um, aside from our anniversary, that will be happening shortly. Uh, the next big one is in October. This is probably the most fun event. Um, very community-oriented. It is our charity chili cook-off. And that is between fire versus evac versus police. Oh, cool. And they all cook. They go crazy. They cook a ton of chili. Um, and all the proceeds go towards the sharing shelf. And they have this program program called Operation, or not, it's like Operation Backpack, but it's Backpacks to School. And that's through um, Family Services of Westchester. How amazing. So we raise the money and then it helps, you know, kids have backpacks and That's school supplies. Great. Yeah, it's a ton of fun and the whole community gets really involved. Oh, very cool. Yeah. Well, I'm going to finish this. All right. And then I'll learn more about beer. <laughs> So I'm really excited to try a flight. Yeah. I have a couple different styles for you. This isn't like wine, right, where I have to spit it out? No. Okay. <laughs> so I can drink every single yep. the cup. All right, great. And okay. what makes a good flight? How do you decide? Um, really, the flight in? is up to the customer, so whatever. It's really just trying out different beers. Sometimes you know what you're getting. Sometimes it's your favorite. Other times they'll say, up to you. Um, so it's really varies all the time. So I can just come up and say, I like lagers, and they'll put something exactly. together for me. Exactly. Oh, so we try to be as green as possible here. So we have these little chalkboards, and you oh, just write nice. down what you want, or you can ask for any opinions, and we'll pour it. But it's a fun way to get to know the other beers. I love that. Yeah. So right. I put together so I um, four different beers ranging in uh, different colors. We did the lightest, the nugget, earlier when we uh, had our cheers. Um, right now I have our barley wine ale, which is probably one of the most popular specialty brands, uh, specialty beers that we offer here. Um, it was recently rated in Beer Advocate, so that one's awesome. beautiful. Um, this was aged in rye whiskey barrels for um, just under a year. Oh my gosh. So very beautiful beer. And then I have our red ale, which is another one of the mainstays. And this one's nice because it's not quite as light as the lager that you had, but um, a little bit more of a malt backbone in there, some mm -hmm. caramel toasty notes. The restaurants love this because it doesn't overpower any of the food. It complements oh, pretty much everything. And then we have our Broken Heart Stout, which um, actually won an award at City Field. Really cool. And this one's nice even for the summertime because it is, I don't like using the word light bodied because it is not. It is so full of flavor, but it's not as heavy as a Guinness. And a lot of times people associate dark beers totally. with heaviness. I know I do, yeah. This one's awesome for barbecuing because not only can you cook with it, you can still oh. eat your hamburger or your steak. I love that. And, and have a beer, yeah. And then the last one is our VIPA. It is um, one of our most popular um, IPAs and actually ended up, it's not quite a mainstay, it's not always going to be around, mm -hmm. but um, should we pause? Yeah, is that yeah. an issue? <laughs> what? Yeah. It's okay? Just go. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, can we start, yeah, from that start one next? with the VIPA? Yeah. Okay. Very cool. You can always touch it. But it's yeah. Different. Totally. So then this one is our VIPA and is actually one of the most um, popular IPAs that we have here. It's called the VIPA because of all the specialty hops that is um, that are included. Yes. And so it, it stands for a very important pale ale. There Love you it. go. <laughs> um, and it's not technically a year-round beer, but we will have it on as often as we can. But sometimes the, the hops are hard to come by. Oh, that's great. So whichever one you'd like to dive in. This one, does it, usually you want to start lightest to darkest, but I kind of poured a, a heavier range here. All right. So I'm just dig in. the super dark one. Yep. Oh, wow. That's super light, and you're right. It's yeah. not as... I feel like Guinness, you feel like you're eating... Food. Yeah, it's a full <laughs> meal, but this one you have all the full flavors, but yeah. not in the body. And I can cook with it. I like that. Yes, it's a lot of fun to cook with. That one's going to be the lightest. That one is the red ale. Do they have different smells? They do. They do. Ooh, that's like sweet. Yeah. Oh, I like that a lot. Yeah, the restaurants 
can't get enough of this one. And it's also nice if um, lagers can be just very light um, and if you want something a little bit more, even on a hot day, even when you're going to the park or yeah. going on your boat, yeah. um, it's nice because you get a little bit more, but you can still uh, have a few okay. without feeling weighed down. And this looks like a similar color. Yeah, so this one's going to be the heaviest. That is the barley wine. Um, it is 14%. It is heavy, but it does not feel like a 14%. Yeah. And then it also, um, it, it's nice because it's like a whole experience. As the beer warms up, you're going to catch some more of those whiskey notes in there. And so it's a, it's a whole experience. It tastes like an entire range yeah. of it different really things. It really is. <laughs> and it ages beautifully if you can hold on to it. So you can <laughs> just hold on to beer and it'll kind of Certain age? Certain styles. Um, I didn't know that. Are, the barley wine is if you store it the right way, put it in a shoebox, forget about it, in your basement or closet. Whoa. It will stay there for quite some time. Um, another one, our Russian Imperial Stout, oh. which actually for our anniversary, we always, we call it Broken In. So this year it's Broken In 3. Mm -hmm. And um, this year our concept is just all about the beer. So we did seven different variations of our Russian Imperial Stout. Wow. And some of them, two of them are in, one's in rye whiskey barrels, the other's in bourbon barrels. Then we did coffee in both of those. We did yeah. some vanilla and cocoa nibs, um, black cherry. I can't wait. So, but depending on oh which one you're doing, like the, the vanilla won't last as long because okay. it is fresh vanilla. You are dealing with yeast, so it will change over time. The coffee will last much, much longer. So it really um, depends on the ingredients. So I should get like too many kegs Drink one and then save the other one. Yes. And I can have like yes. I've, I've had to have okay. my husband and my family take hold of mine because yeah. if it ends up in my house, and I do drink it. it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they, they stash I, it for I me, that. otherwise, I wouldn't have any more. It's a little bit of willpower. I like that. Yeah. And then that is the VIPA. Which is. Um, you, there's, it's really fragrant. It has a lot of aroma on there. Um, it is a heavier so IPA, but it's not, um, you don't get that, that stickiness in your mouth. You don't have all the residue. It has a strong flavor, but it's not, sometimes when you have an IPA, it's a punch in the face. Yeah. And you have that residue left over on your tongue. This one is just really nicely balanced. It's it is really a little nice. bit sweet and tropical. Again, just kind of brings you through. Uh, and also does not overpower a lot of the foods, which um, IPAs can, can sometimes. That. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this is great. I love the idea of a flight. Yes, you it's know, a lot I, of fun. I would not be able to handle pints of all of these, so this is perfect. Yeah. And, uh, and I would try new things. I would never normally try that dark beer, but that's actually my favorite one. Exactly. It's delicious. And exactly. So nice and light, so. It's a lot of fun when you go to a brewery and they're doing a new release. Like for me, yeah. I'm not, um, sours are not my favorite. But when I go somewhere and they're having this, you know, new release, then it's nice to be, have the option and That's awesome. you can finish that. That's great. Yeah, Thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you so much for joining me on my tour at Broken Bow Brewery. I hope you had as much fun as I did.